Our um, former Prime Minister, the long, second longest serving Prime Minister, the one that I served under, John Howard, uh, made the point that some, as he saw it, at least, of the social activism that we see now from some very angry people is about deauthorizing Christianity. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a fair judgment? I said to you, I think the day we met, that I consider myself blessed that I live in a Christian country. You did country. say that. Yeah. You, know, you so, said, I'm an atheist, but I thank God every day that I live in Christian America. Yeah. I remember that's, the words. That's a, that's a pretty good quote. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, it was yours. I, I got to quote myself on that. No. <laughs> well, look. Well, so first off, let me just clean up one thing. So interestingly, I had never thought of myself as an atheist specifically. And then when I started having a lot of these conversations, I started having a lot of preeminent atheists on. So Michael Shermer, whose books here, and Sam Harris, and Peter Bogosian, some of the real, what I think are excellent atheist thinkers who I know to be who've all become good friends of mine who I think are deeply moral people who are serious people about their thinking and all of those things. I had a series of them on and I sort of, I had never said I was an atheist, but I always was interested in what I thought was sort of the ultimate free thinking, let's say, something like that. And, and then I just, one day I just, in a live stream, I think I just said something like, I'm an atheist. And it just sort of like fell out of my mouth. And for about a year, I just sort of, that people kind of prescribed that to me. And it was never really what I felt. And then about two years ago, you know, I do this August off the grid where I lock my phone in a safe and I have no TV, no internet, no, no nothing. And I just, and I just disappear. And I find it to be that must really be why good. you look so healthy. That, yeah, it, it helps the hair grow and everything. It's really good. Um, but I've done it for three years in a row and I do find it to be, especially, look, it's in, in light of everything else we're talking about here, escaping a little of the madness sometimes is, is good. And I've been really happy that as I've done it each year, more and more people have joined me uh, to, to whatever their capacity is. Not everybody could do a month and, you know, but even if you can just do weekends or whatever. But in, in any event, when I came back two years ago, um, I had had a lot of time to think and my brain had a lot of time to process things. And I do believe in something else. I believe in something before me that people before me believed. And I do believe that, that the basis in that, inalienable rights, what, what they say in the Constitution actually is God-given rights. So whether you believe that's a man in the sky that is watching you and judging you, or you believe it in, in what I would say is maybe more of a little bit of a functional purpose, that without having something outside of ourselves, that to organize a society and just say, oh, we can just do it on our own. Now, do I doubt that those three guys who I just mentioned are deeply moral and good? No, I don't. So I think at the micro level, you can be, you can be really good, really good. You can be a great, spectacular human. At a macro level, I don't think a society can organize without having something outside of itself. And I think if, if, Christian, if Christianity had sold itself a little bit better in the last couple of decades with that, instead of getting lost in a little bit of the, the social issues and, and sort of that sort of thing, I think that might have actually stopped some of the problems we see right now. But, but that being said, right before we started, I told you, I now speak at Liberty University in front of thousands and thousands of people. I speak at churches. I go to invited to Baptist things and evangelical things. And I go up there, I tell them what I think, and they're very happy. They, they invite me there. We shake hands after and we're good. So I'm enthused even what's happening on, on the Christian side of things. So I think there's all sorts of new alliances happening right now. Yeah, it's, I find that very interesting. I mean, I come from a classically Christian perspective. I'm a believing, practicing Christian. I didn't come from a Christian background, funnily enough. Nominal, very nominal. Mm -hmm. But I came to believe it's so true. You, so you had your own evolution. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's as, right. as a thinking person might do. Yeah. Um, uh, most of my critics would say I'm not capable of thinking, but I've ended up there. Um, and it does seem to me that some, you've just hit on something that I think is incredibly important. If a society is to organise itself, it has to believe in something bigger. It's either a man-made imposition, a totalitarian government that controls, and boy, that's becoming frightening given the technology for control now mm -hmm. that is starting to emerge, the digital prisons that are being built in some parts of the world or we do it voluntarily, we, if you like, respect one another and interact with one another at a high enough plane because we believe a higher authority has said, I can't lord it over you. I have to respect you because a higher being said, your soul is of equal value of mine, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of a lift from our longest serving prime minister, who's not a man who wore religion on his sleeve, Bob Menzies, but he actually said, democracy is not a machine, it's a spirit. 
in that's which- That's a great quote. That's a great quote. I love that. Yeah. Well, it's not mechanistic. It does depend upon, you know, if you like, transcendence in a way. But what he was saying was, and I think this is profoundly important, and I'll come to the, the challenge that arises out of it in a moment, is that, uh, you know, you can't pursue perfect equality. We're not all exactly the same. But in a democracy, we're obliged to recognise that a higher authority, the Christian conception, is that someone has said every soul is of equal value. That, that I find tremendously liberating. I actually do believe Western freedom is built on that notion of respect for the worth and dignity of others. It's been washed out. We have free choice. We've chosen essentially to neglect that. Let's be honest. Let's not kid ourselves. We've basically rejected that view uh, of the universe. What do we replace it with if it's not to be government telling us how to rule our law, our lives. In other words, there's two yeah. views of freedom here. We accept individual responsibility, which in America is the independence view of freedom, with its limitations, because it can't be licensed. Mm -hmm. License destroys. Or will it be a version of freedom where the government tells you what you can think, what you can say, and therefore what you can think? Well, this is it. Who's going the, to win? This is the question that every Western democracy has to face. Period. This is where everyone is, you're, we're either all there now or we're pretty damn close to getting to that point. And you have to really be able to think clearly about these things. So there's interesting things happening. It's like, why do the more totalitarian ideas, why do the more authoritarian ideas, let's say socialism, why do they come with an erasure of everything we know? This is a little bit of uh, what Douglas Murray talks about. Why do they come with the idea that you can no longer say there's two genders. That doesn't mean you can't respect a trans person individually. So of course, if if someone, if I know that somebody is trans, I will absolutely, if they treat me with respect, I'll treat them with respect. Well, first off, I would want them to be treated equally under the law no matter what. I would want that, you know what I mean? As long as they're not breaking any other law that no one else is breaking, I would want them to be treated equally. But in terms of interpersonal relations, if they treat me with respect, I'll treat them with respect. But why is it, that's very different than than saying you can't say there are two genders anymore. Now, yes, of course, are, are there hermaphrodites that's 0 0.001, but that's not it. Now we have to say there's 364 genders. You don't wanna be glib about that, but it's like, why do they have to also erase basic settled truths that we know? And there's a reason for it because they want to create a situation where we are so second guessing ourselves about, every, about the most obvious things, about the most obvious things of, of male and female, that then the state can come in and kind of clean up everything. And again, this is where I would say, if there was a better set of ideas than traditional, say, Christian beliefs or Judeo-Christian beliefs or Old Testament, New Testament beliefs, then I would be willing to explore that. You know what I mean? If, if, mm. you, came, if you came in here, laid down a book and said, this book actually, yeah. this is a man-made book. Mm. It has solved these issues. Now, I think we got pretty damn close to it. As you may have noticed in my... Uh, control room right here, we have the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence on the wall with a big American flag. I think we got as close as humans can ever get to it, but we're watching it erode. We right did pretty now. well in Australia too. Yeah, well, you know, you guys- but we, we drew on the best of the British and the American tradition Yeah. when our Constitution was written. But we, that's an interesting question though. Would you say that Americans have done it slightly better or more effectively if for no other reason yeah, well, than, than, than because of the First Amendment? Yeah, yeah. Well, you got there first, in a sense, because of the deep thinking that all culminated at that time in history. Think how and, different that is. Think how different the idea of the founding of America, when these incredible thinkers from extraordinary, extraordinary thinkers, not only thinkers. How how dare we not respect them? Even show them enormous, you know, um, almost veneration and be modest about our own relatively ordinary view. But instead we scream that they're racist and I they know. own slaves and these ridiculous things. George Washington, But go most read people... the Federalist Papers. Look at the thinking, the sweat that went into, how do we balance these things so that our children and grandchildren will be free? It was noble beyond belief. Did you enjoy this episode? We cannot get good public policy out of a bad debate. If you value vital conversations like this one, Please like, share, subscribe, and join the conversation.